Hi guys, it's Pete from MyJuryBench.com. Today I'm not going to do a jewelry video or a watch video. We're going to work on something completely different. My wife has a car that does not have parking sensors in it. and She was recently involved in a small little accident at a parking lot and I thought I would put them in her car. So I ordered set on Amazon and I decided to do the install. Here you, you can see that uh, it, it goes pretty quickly. This video is only about 10 minutes long and I'm going to show you exactly what I did to do the install. Let's get started. Some of the tools you'll need are a drill, some screwdrivers, a panel remover. You can use a flat screwdriver for that. You'll need some wire cutters, some wire strippers, electrical tape, and some glue for the sensors. And of course, the parking sensor kit itself, which you can order in the description below. Here you can see, I'm just gonna show you what's in the kit. We have four parking sensors that get mounted to the bumper. You can also get an eight sensor kit we have the LED with the buzzer indicator that would normally go in the car, which I did install in the car. The power lead that comes with the kit and that taps into your reverse light and the ground on your car, as well as the control box that controls everything. And you just plug everything into the marked places and it goes pretty quickly. It comes with double-sided tape, so you can mount that just about anywhere you want. And it includes a drill bit, and that drill bit is the same size as the sensors that go into the bumper. And you put that in your drill, and once you've measured out everything, you can just drill the holes there and insert the sensors, as you'll see later in the video. You'll also need some wire, and uh, this did not come with wire that was long enough to do the install for my wife's car, so I ordered a spool of wire on Amazon, and it came within a day or two. Now, I spent some considerable amount of time measuring the bumper, and just put a piece of blue tape across where you want to insert the sensors. Make sure there's nothing behind them. Um, some bumpers can just butt up against the metal part of the frame, so if you can find a place where you can put them and then use the tape to indicate where you're going to drill. We'll get to that in a little bit. Here you can see I'm going to start removing the panels in the back of the car. Um, if you have a sedan, you can open the trunk and probably remove half the panels in there. My wife's SUV, it's a Mazda CX-5, so we're just going to remove everything out of the back so that we can work without being encumbered by the tools and the tire. Once I get the tire out, then I will start tackling all the panels. So here you can see under the tire, there are two rubber grommets, which actually go out to the underside of the car, which is perfect because now I can uh, get access to the wires coming into the vehicle without having to drill any holes in the car. Here I'm just removing the back uh, panel surround on the back hatch and I'm doing that so that I can get access to all the wires. This is the panel. Um, her, her reverse lights are actually on the door itself. So I had to do the long route to get to those wires and you can see here this is where the backup lights are um, on the door itself. And you need the power lead to attach from the control unit to the power lead on your backup light, which is that little white wire there. The black is the ground. So once you know where that wire is going, I'm going to just finish taking off all the panels. Here on the side panel where I'm going to mount the control unit behind, I have to remove some screws and one 10 millimeter bolt that holds this panel in place, as well as the clips that keep it in its locked position. Once I get those out, you can just gently pry that panel loose from the side. Now, I didn't remove all the screws for it, so I didn't have to remove the entire panel right out of the vehicle. Here you can see I'm working on wiring the power lead from the backup light on the inside cover panels of the back door. And I'm wired, zip-tying zip them to the existing wire harness that's there. And I'm just going to follow the power lead that goes back into the vehicle from the door. 
Now these got this little rubber tube with some grommets on it. So you're gonna pull those gently out. You don't wanna break those. You, you're gonna to have to reuse them obviously. But I need to get the power wire from that door into that rubber, <clears throat> into that rubber tube and then into the inside compartment of the, the car. So once you get that done, you just pull your wire through. I used a blunt screwdriver with some tape on it so that I could gently push that wire through without destroying any of the wire harness. Just be careful there because you can break those wires. Now it's a matter of running that power line down the uh, side of the vehicle to where I'm going to mount the control box for the parking sensor. Just be gentle, you don't want to break any of those. Here you can see I've actually tied into the power lead into the power wire that goes to the backup light. Just wanted to show you how I did that. You can either use heat shrink or solder it, or as I did, I just stripped the wire back a little bit, wrapped it, and made sure that it had a really good connection. I crimped it and just put some electrical tape around it. Now I've got the power lead run to where I want the control unit, and this is the head unit. I'm gonna mount the head unit on the back of the vehicle on the inside, right on the headliner, so that when you look in your rear view mirror, you can see the LED lights. And uh, the buzzer is kind of loud, so I didn't really want to put it up front because it's kind of annoying and you can hear it really well from the back. And it makes sense that it's buzzing from the back, that way you know something's behind you. And I'm just running the control wire for that little LED panel with the buzzer on it. Once I get that to where I want it to go, I can make sure that it's routed perfectly into where I'm going to mount the control box and then plug it into the control box. That plug goes into the control box for the head unit and it's marked very well. And actually each of these connectors, um, the only ones that, that aren't different are the uh, sensor connectors. So here you can see after I've marked the bumper, I'm actually going to drill the four holes for the sensors. So just take your time doing this. You don't want to be too aggressive with the bumper. You want to try to let the drill bit do a nice even cut into the bumper. That way you have less work to do later as far as cleaning up any burrs on the bumper itself. And there's the last hole. I'm just going to sand down any burrs on the inside and then I will insert the uh, wires and then pull them through and mount the sensors. What I did was I took a label maker and I labeled each of the wires so that I knew which wire was to, to what sensor. Um, not that I think it matters, but it might matter just in case because the LEDs do detect what side you're on. So here you can see I'm just pushing in the sensor and that's a good place to put some silicon glue so that you can uh, make sure they don't leak back there as well as the sensors will be glued in place. You can either do it from the back side or just the other side. Now here you can see underneath the vehicle and I had to run the wires for the sensors above that frame line. Now you have to be careful especially with this car because the mufflers are on either side of the car. It's a dual exhaust and there's a huge muffler and catalytic converter right under that heat shield that you see there. And right above that is the tire well for the spare tire where that rubber grommet is. So I wanted to make sure I was well above that, that uh, heat shield and the wires weren't touching anything like the muffler or the exhaust pipes. You can see where I pulled the wires through that rubber grommet. It's a good idea to put a little bit of silicone seal in that once you've run your wires. And I attached the ground wire to the frame or the chassis of the car. Also at that point I attached the, uh, the power lead right there. So the power wire that goes from the control box connects to that long power line I had to run to the tail light or the backup light. Okay, so we're in the car and we're gonna test the uh, reverse camera. Doors are all closed. So put it in reverse, camera comes up. And there's the indicator. Just getting closer to the garbage can. There it goes. Okay, about two feet away from it. 
Nice. So that's how I did the install for my wife's car parking sensors. I got the I got the kit on Amazon. I believe it was like $17. I'll put a link to it below. And if you want front sensing uh, parking sensors, and you can also get the eight unit one that has uh, front and reverse parking sensors. I hope you liked this video, guys. If you did, uh, give it a thumbs up and have a great day. Thanks for watching.